Hello lovely kittens, this video is on the fundamentals of biology, the cells and how they are controlled. If you want to get the pictures to fill in that are using this, you can get it over on my website in the free version guide. DNA is a long strand of deoxyribonucleic acid, made up of lots of letters, A's, T's, C's and G's. And these twist round into a double helix. This double helix is still ridiculously long, so it further twists rounds so that it's in a chromosome. And this chromosome is located in the nucleus of a cell. In mitosis, we go from one parent cell to two identical daughter cells. The first thing that needs to happen is that the DNA in the nucleus needs to condense into chromosomes and then they need to line up down the middle. Once they're all lined up down the middle and all the checks are taking place to make sure the um, chromosomes aren't going to go astray, they can start to be pulled apart to either end of the cell. New nuclei will form and then they will separate into two identical daughter cells. The advantages of sexual reproduction is that you'll get a genetically diverse population. which means they're going to be better protected from diseases. The counter to that is that a disadvantage of asexual reproduction is that you're going to get a genetically identical population. So that if a disease comes along and one plant is susceptible, chances are all plants, the whole population, or animals are going to be susceptible and they're all going to be wiped out at once. An advantage of asexual reproduction is that there is only one parent, meaning that the plant or the animal doesn't have to wait around for a mate to turn up, whereas with sexual reproduction, a mate is required. And sometimes this can be quite hard to find, especially in sparsely populated locations. Another advantage of asexual reproduction is that there energy is conserved and what I mean by that is that the parent is putting all of its energy into conserving its own genes so this is like the selfish gene it wants its genes its genetics to be continued as opposed to continuing putting energy into something that only has half of its genes cancer is when cells begin to divide uncontrollably This is going to lead to lumps, which for most people, some people, is the first sign that something is wrong. And these lumps can be divided into two groups, benign tumours and malignant tumours. Benign tumours are slow and are generally harmless. Things like warts or moles are benign tumours. And having a lump on your skin generally doesn't do you much damage. The problem is when there are malignant tumours. These are fast growing, they are aggressive, and they are mobile. So I don't mean the wart on your arm or the mole on your arm is going to get up and start moving around. I mean cells are going to move throughout your body. Cells from the initial lump are going to jump into the bloodstream, move somewhere else, and they could set up tumours, lumps in other places. And while a lump on your skin generally won't do you much damage, a lump in your brain, a lump in your liver, or a lump in your lungs can do you quite a lot of damage. There are a lot of risk factors involved in cancer, and there are a lot of things that we're in control of. Smoking has large implications in lung cancer. Diet, a good diet, can reduce your risk of bowel cancer, whereas if you don't eat much fruit and vegetables, then you are putting your bowel um, at risk of cancer. The amount of time you spend in the sun can affect your susceptibility to skin cancer. And unprotected sex can leave you at risk of cervical cancer. 
stem cells are fantastic things because they are things that have the potential to turn into any other type of cell. They have a number of different uses. For example, if you're treating Parkinson's disease, they can be used to grow new brain cells. If we're talking about brain or spinal injury, bone injuries, then they can be used to grow new bones to fill the gap. If we have organ failure, we can grow new organs or parts of organs instead of waiting and making someone wait on the incredibly long transplant waiting list. If we want to make stem cells, then we take a nuclei out of an egg cell. We take nuclei from the patient's uh, cell and insert that into the empty egg. The egg can then start to develop into an embryo. From this embryo, the stem cell are then removed and stem cells are turned into new cells. This does come with quite a lot of controversy because human embryos are going to be created and then destroyed. Um, and there are lots of religious objections to this. People just saying that life um, starts when embryos are created and people that object to the destruction of embryos. The brain is the control centre of the body, it makes sure everything functions properly and tells various different parts what to do. We have the cerebral cortex, the cerebellum and the medulla. The brain is an incredibly complicated thing to study because um, for it to be functioning properly it needs to be inside a living person. Doctors can work on mapping various different things by using MRI scanning and CT scanning, um, giving the person different stimuli to see which parts of the brain light up. Here we have our beautiful picture of the eye, the sclera, which is the white bit, the retina, which is where the image is focused, the optic nerve, which sends message to brain, The ciliary muscles which change the shape of the lens. Uh, the cornea which is a protective covering. Pupil lets light in. The lens is responsible for focus. And the suspensory ligaments hold the lens in place. If you are short-sighted, you can't see distant objects. And if you're long-sighted, you can't see close objects. In an eye that can see correctly, the lens will take the light and will focus the image on the retina, whereas someone that is short-sighted, the image focuses before the retina, and someone that is long-sighted, the image focuses behind the retina. To correct short-sightedness, we need a diverging lens, and to correct long-sightedness, we need a converging lens. The nervous system is incredibly complex and is overlaid on our spinal and muscular system. It consists of the brain, spinal cord, which together are going to make the central nervous system, or CNS, and all the neurons, the receptors and effectors. When you pick up stimuli, that signal needs to travel from wherever you picked up, so your fingers, all the way up to your nervous system, your central nervous system. Sometimes just stopping at your spinal cord and then coming straight back again. That is going to be a reflex. This is going to happen when you touch something hot, so you move your hand away without even thinking about it. Other times something is going to happen, the signal will go up to your brain, you'll think about it, and then you'll decide to move. 
The nerve cells involved in this are very long. So this cell body here is incredibly long. And this can send a fast electrical signal. However, when we come to transfer the signal from one um, nerve cell to another nerve cell, things slow down a bit because they have to cross a synapse. This is going to be a slow chemical signal. As the chemical has to be released, diffuse across the channel and then be picked up and then initiate another electrical signal.